In this video, we're going to learn about basic plant structure. We'll see the plant uh, cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems, which of course come to make the organism. Um, we'll also briefly touch upon um, the idea of photosynthesis, and we'll later tie in how the plant structure works in order to allow for the function of photosynthesis. Um, so remember that plants are very, very important, even though um, many times you don't hear a lot about them in school or you don't focus a lot of um, focus on them as much as you would other units they are very very important um, they provide us with medicine with food your clothing they're the base of, of uh, food chains they are producers they make oxygen for us and glucose um, so they do a very 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 important job in our ecosystems for life and without them we wouldn't be where we are today So we've seen this picture before, but the idea is that uh, you obtain uh, organic molecules from your food, um, for example, glucose, and what you do is you know that there's energy trapped in this glucose, but you need, so you need to break it out. Um, in, order to br in order to break out the energy from the glucose, you send that glucose to the mitochondrion, along with some oxygen that you breathe in. Um, you break the glucose open, and you transfer the energy into a molecule called ATP, and you get to use that ATP to do whatever you need to do, whether it be exercise, think, involuntary functions, every other thing there, um, you use that ATP for. Um, and then the waste that you produce during that reaction is CO2 and water. You breathe that CO2 and uh, you breathe that CO2 out and you get rid of the water through urine, sweat, and other methods. Um, and the idea is that this goes back to the plants or producers um, and the plants can do photosynthesis again to make more of this glucose. So that glucose initially came from the plants in the chloroplast and so did the oxygen. So plants produce two very important things for us, organic molecules such as glucose um, and other sugars and compounds um, and oxygen to allow us to do cellular respiration. Um, and again, our goal in this unit is to take a look at plant structures um, that allow for this very, very important function. In grade 12 biology, you'll focus a great deal on these two processes, cellular respiration in the mitochondria and then photosynthesis in um, uh, the chloroplast. Remember that photosynthesis happens only in, um, well, at least right now, photosynthesis in this lesson is going to happen in the plants. Keep in mind that photosynthesis can happen in other types of organisms, such as protists and bacteria. But the main idea I want you to get is that photosynthesis does not happen in animals. Um, plants, remember, they're able to do both photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Animals cannot do photosynthesis. Here we can see uh, a very important um, picture. Um, it's a food web, and you can see that the plant is the base of this food web. So you have some herbivores over here eating the plant. Um, and then over here you can see organisms eating the herbivore, and that just goes up the food chain. But the idea is that the energy from the sun, all the energy in food webs and food chains comes from the sun ultimately. We can't use it unless plants do photosynthesis for us to convert it into energy that we can use. Um, or rather to store it into molecules that we can then extract the energy from. So it's stored in glucose, and then that glucose now has energy trapped in it, chemical energy, and so when something eats that glucose, we can break open that glucose to release the chemical energy so that we can use it to do work. Uh, hopefully you, well, you noticed the error by now. Uh, when you studied grade nine, remember these arrows should be flipped. So we read it this way, the plant is eaten by the caterpillar, the caterpillar is eaten by the uh, fish or the magikarp and the magikarp is eaten by the side duck over here so the arrows are the wrong way on this picture um, and if you didn't notice it now you do so let's take a look at the basic needs of a plant um, plants need a few things and especially to do photosynthesis uh, so one of the main things that um, plants need um, just like you and me um, are nutrients and so one of the nutrients a plant needs is um, carbohydrates for example glucose is just one example of it plants are lucky they're able to make their own um, carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis we need carbohydrates as well we can't make it through photosynthesis so we have to go eat stuff plants can make it on their own so they are autotrophs um, and so in order to make um, carbohydrates the plants need carbon dioxide uh, which is obtained through their leaves. So uh, the carbon dioxide is found in the atmosphere 
and then it enters their leaves. Um, they need water, and that's obtained through organs called the roots. Um, and they also need solar energy, which again, the leaves help to uh, accomplish that as well. So our leaves are nice and flat. They have chloroplast inside with special pigments called chlorophyll, and they can absorb light. They're nice and flat to absorb, um, to increase their surface area, and they have chlorophyll in there to absorb the solar energy. Um, and again, the CO2, that goes into the leaves as well. There's little pores in the leaves called stomata that open up to allow some CO2 to enter. Plants need other things as well. They need nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and they use these nutrients to build other things like proteins, lipids, and other compounds. And typically these nutrients are obtained from the roots. Um, so uh, understand what plants need, understand uh, where they get these different things from um, and how they obtain them. So understand where the nutrients are from, understand where the CO2 comes from, the H2O and the solar energy. Remember that after the plant gets all these ingredients into the leaves, the CO2, the H2O, and the solar energy, photosynthesis can happen to make glucose and oxygen. So we're gonna focus primarily on um, how we obtain all the ingredients necessary for uh, photosynthesis. You should know how to label a plant like this. Um, we're gonna talk about the different organs, such as the uh, roots, the uh, leaves, the stem, um, and the flower later on. Um, and we'll also talk about the different tissues in plants. So we've seen this picture before. Um, this is called the hierarchy of biological organization. Life starts at the cell. And then when you have many specialized cells, um, those make tissues. Um, so we saw that in uh, animals, but it also exists in plants. There's, plants, there's plant tissues. Um, many tissues together make organs. We saw that in animals, but then it also exists in plants. So there's plant organs. Um, many organs make organ systems. We saw that in animals. And again, it exists in plants as well. Um, and then organ systems together make up the organism, just like we saw in animals. Uh, so we're going to focus first on the cells of plants, some specialized cells of plants. Then we'll take a look at the tissues. Then we'll take a look at the organs and then the organ system. And then the next presentation will focus a great deal on how these organs, organ systems, and tissues work together in order to accomplish photosynthesis. So this lesson is really more of an introduction to the different structures. Um, and then afterwards, we'll put it all together to see their function. So here we have a uh, plant cell, it's just a general plant cell. You need to understand that plant cells can be very, very different from one another depending on what plant you're looking at. Um, a few features that you need to remember about plants um, is that they have many organelles like animals do. Um, they, have, they have some uh, mitochondria, um, but if you take a look at uh, one of the features that's different from animals is that they have chloroplasts which allow them to do photosynthesis. And within this chloroplast, there's pigments called chlorophyll which allow the plants to absorb light um, in order to do photosynthesis. So specifically um, solar energy in this case, um, but it can be done with artificial light as well. Um, plants surrounding their cell membrane have a cell wall and their cell wall is made up of um, cellulose. Uh, and you can also see that uh, animals have vacuoles, but plants, they have a vacuole as well. It's just one vacuole that's a lot larger and that's called their central vacuole. And so that's all stuff you learned in grade 10 and you'll see it in more detail later on. Um, but you should know those general features. So again, here's our generic plant cell, chloroplast cell wall. Within the cell wall, there's little pores called plasma desmata. The plants can connect to other plant cells that way, and they can um, share information, they can uh, share nutrients, they can share bad things too, um, but the idea is that it allows them to connect to each other. Um, remember, plants don't have centrioles, um, though they still do mitosis. Um, animals have flagella, but in plants, um, flagella do exist, but they're rare. Um, and the other interesting thing about plants is that they don't have any lysosomes. So animals have lysosomes, but plants do not. Um, and so here's our just a quick little overview of um, the difference between plants and animals. Um, so for animal cells, they don't have the cell walls. They have a cell membrane nonetheless. Um, animal cells do not have a chloroplast. Um, and unlike the plant cells that are autotrophs, specifically photoautotrophs, they make their own food using light, um, animal cells are heterotrophs. So they have to go and hunt their own carbohydrates. So just like we saw with uh, animal cells, plant cells can be specialized as well. Um, here we have a picture of a part of a leaf called a um, stomata. Um, so what you can see here, um, are guard cells. 
um, the guard cells are the specialized cells that um, regulate this opening over here. Um, and so what happens is they can open and they can close um, in order to um, allow for carbon dioxide to enter um, and water to leave when it needs to. Um, they can close when um, you're not really doing photosynthesis so that not too much water leaves and you don't get and you don't dehydrate. Um, and so there's specialized cells that perform this function. Um, so singular is stoma. This is the pore, the stoma. Plural is actually stomata. Um, so the guard cells, two guard cells regulate this opening uh, and then carbon dioxide can enter the leaf this way and water can leave. But the main point is that guard cells are specialized to regulate the opening of the stoma. Uh, and this is where gas exchange um, can occur. Oxygen will also leave this area as well. So we saw gas exchange in animals. There's also gas exchange happening within plants. So many specialized cells together make up tissues. Um, just like we saw in animals, plants have um, groups of specialized cells that work together to accomplish functions. There's three main types of tissues in plants. Some resources say four. I'll talk about the three main types and I'll talk about the other that is sometimes considered a tissue but not really. So three main types of tissue are the vascular, ground, and um, dermal tissue. And they're found in different areas in different organs of the plant. So if you take a look over here, we have our plant. We did a cross section. We cut it over here and then we um, aimed this part over here towards the screen so you could see the inside. Um, and so you can see over here we have ground tissue which makes up most of the filler um, in the stem. Um, we have uh, dermal tissue which seems to be the surrounding um, area. Um, and then we have some vascular tissue over here. Now this tissue is distributed in different ways throughout the um, different organs. So you can see for example this is how it's distributed um, in the stem. Uh, over here you can see how it's distributed in the, uh, sorry, this is how it's distributed in the roots. Over here you can see how it's distributed in the leaves and here you can see how it's distributed in the stem. So slightly different distribution um, and it also differs depending on what type of plant you're looking at. Um, but you should be able to uh, make some general conclusions and label some pictures based on the um, tissue that you see. Most times um, the ground tissue is the meat of it all. It's the filler. So that's pretty, pretty easy to spot. Um, usually for, um, for vascular tissue, it's going to be kind of the little weird patterns that you see on the inside um, of the structures that you're looking at, either ring patterns or X patterns. And typically the dermal tissue is the surrounding area anyways. So it's always a similar pattern, just slightly different. So for each tissue, you need to know the major function. You need to know some examples and then some examples of specialized cells within those tissues. So we'll start with dermal tissue first. Um, think dermal um, surrounding. Um, so basically, uh, the dermal tissue is the outermost covering of the, uh, the plants. Um, it allows for gas exchange and exchange of different um, components that the plant may need and get rid of. Um, one important feature is that it provide it prevents dehydration. So, um, for example, on the leaves of the um, of plants, uh, the dermal tissue will produce um, a thing called a cuticle. It's a waxy cuticle, and it prevents water loss. And we've seen that in the previous unit um, briefly. Uh, and also, many times, the dermal tissue will provide some defense. So, dermal tissue might have things like uh, little needles or little thorns that will provide defense against herbivores. Some examples of dermal tissue include epidermal tissue and um, periderm tissue. The epidermal tissue is the outermost covering of leaves. Periderm tissue is the outer covering of woody plants, so plants that look like wood. Um, so um, and again, again, it's the outermost layer of plants. Specialized cells that you might see in dermal tissue would be uh, the guard cells that we discussed previously. Um, they form um, stomata. Uh, so these little pores over here that allow for gas exchange and for water vapor to leave um, or they might close it so that not too much water vapor leaves. Um, so again, stoma is singular, stomata is plural. Uh, so hopefully you know what you're looking at over here. We can see some guard cells um, and over here we can see the stoma. 
um, and you can see that it's kind of clogged. So that's probably not good for the uh, plant. So think about what repercussions this can have on a, um, on a plant and why. So now we see the ground tissue. Ground tissue um, does a few different things depending on where you are um, at in the plant. Um, typically it's the filler of the plant. Um, so in the stem it gives you some strength and some support. In the roots it'll store carbohydrates and water. Um, in the leaves it's, um, it's the area where photosynthesis is happening. Um, so it's quite diverse in terms of its function. Um, so you should know these different functions based on where they are. Um, and you should also know uh, examples of where you might see them. Um, so usually the ground tissue makes up most of the um, plant. Again, like I said, it's the meat of a plant, so to speak. Uh, and there's three main types of ground tissue. You have parenchyma, colenchyma, and the uh, sparenchyma as well. Um, in terms of specialized cells, uh, if you look in the leaves, um, there's specialized cells in the ground tissue called mesophyll cells. And those mesophyll cells is where um, photosynthesis will occur. Uh, and so here you can see some of the mesophyll cells within a uh, leaf. And you'll notice these little discs, these little round spots here. Um, and hopefully you can guess what those are. Um, not nuclei, but chloroplast. And so these cells would be have many chloroplasts, which is fitting for their function to do photosynthesis. Once again, you can see the many chloroplasts within the um, plant cells responsible for photosynthesis. And then we get to our vascular tissue. Our vascular tissue is, you can think of it almost like the uh, blood vessels in your body. Um, they allow for transport and movement of things. And so there's two major functions that vascular tissue have. There's transpiration, which is moving um, water, typically, from roots to leaves, right? Because the water has to go from the root to the leaf to do photosynthesis. And then translocation. Translocation is the transport of sugars once they're produced in the leaf, other parts of the plant might need sugars. Um, so the translocation process is taking sugars from the leaf and then putting them into other parts of the plant. Um, and they also help to support the plant body as well. Uh, so there's two main types of vascular tissue in plants, xylem and phloem tissue. Um, now these xylem tissue is made up of actually dead cells. They're just dead elongated cells. They're, almost, they're basically empty on the inside. Um, and that's a good thing because it allows water to move through it like a tunnel. So the xylem is for the movement of water um, from roots to leaves. The phloem, these cells are actually alive. Um, they're elongated, and they're responsible for the transport of sugar that's produced during photosynthesis to other parts of the plant. And they also transport um, phloem, uh, hormones. Sorry. So phloem transports um, sugars and hormones. Xylem transports water and the xylem. They are specialized cells, but they're actually dead. So they lost a lot of their organelles, including the nucleus, um, to make room for water to go up. Uh, so there are specialized cells that exist within the xylem and the phloem. Um, one example um, is the, uh, the sieve elements uh, that are found in the phloem, and they basically have these little pores in them that allow for sugar to travel easily from one section to the other, um, since the job of the phloem is to transport sugar throughout the plant's uh, body. So here we can see xylem and phloem, uh, a comparison of them and what they're doing. Uh, you can see the xylem transporting water uh, upwards towards the um, towards the leaf. And over here you can see the sugar produced during photosynthesis goes into the phloem. And then from the phloem, the uh, sugar can be delivered to other cells of the, um, of the plant. So typically the, um, the area from which the sugar is coming, so the, the leaf is called the source. Um, and then the area where you're depositing the sugar, that's called the, uh, the sink. So we have the source cell and the sink cell over here. Uh, xylem transporting the water, phloem transporting the sugar. Usually the phloem is connected to the source cell um, and to the sink cell by a companion cell. So there's a cell in between the two. Um, so there's a bit more transport happening there. Uh, here you can see just an overall picture of what we've seen so far. Um, xylem and phloem transporting different things um, in different parts of the plant. Again, you should know how to label a diagram like this. Uh, you should know what part of the, the plant this is, um, especially with this picture like this. You see a cut on the stem there, and then we aim the stem at the computer again. So you should know that this is a cross-section 
of a stem um, and you should know what the different parts are. Uh, mostly it's easy to identify that the dermal tissue is on the outside. Ground tissue is kind of in between the dermal and the vascular and vascular is more so in the center in this, in this particular picture where you see the, um, the stem. And again, this is just a larger image to show you the difference between xylem and phloem. Um, so that, those are the three main types of tissues that you see in uh, plants. There's actually another type of tissue that's not really considered tissue. The, the primary reason it's not considered tissue is because um, it's made up of uh, stem cells, which are not specialized. And the definition of a tissue is um, having specialized cells. Uh, but some textbooks will consider it tissue nonetheless. Um, it's called meristematic tissue. Um, so it's unspecialized cells that are able to divide. Typically, the specialized cells, they lose the ability to divide. Um, so these unspecialized cells, these meristematic tissue cells, um, since they can divide, they're responsible for um, growing plant parts and allowing the plants to grow as well. They can also serve as sources for specialized cells. So if you need to repair the plant, um, the meristematic tissue can specialize into a cell that you need to replace. Um, so you'll find them in many areas, usually at the tips of these areas, so stem tips and root tips, to allow for growth. Um, and then specialized cell, well, they're not really specialized cells. They're the stem cells of plants, which means they are unspecialized or less specialized than specialized cells. Um, so again, like I said, you're mostly going to find them in the tips of uh, certain organs to allow for growth. So here we can see a uh, meristematic cell specializing in two different types of cells that the plant um, may need. You should know the tissues, their function, uh, their, a description of them, and also their role. You should know where they're found. You should know some examples of um, each of them. So dermal tissues, for example, we talked about epidermis and periderm. Um, here we see where they're located. Uh, vascular tissue, we talked about xylem and phloem, um, and you should really know a dif the difference between the xylem and the phloem, what they do, but also in terms of their structure. I highly recommend um, that you know a difference between that you know differences between xylem and phloem. Um, over here, we saw the ground tissue, the different types of ground tissue, um, and then we saw the role that they all play within the uh, the plant. So when many tissues come together, that makes plant, that makes organs. Um, we saw many organs in animals. Now we're going to take a look at the plant organs. Um, so the main organs in plants are the roots, the leaves, the stem, and the flower. Uh, this presentation will focus primarily on the first three. Um, when we get to plant re reproduction, we'll talk about the flower in more detail. We've actually already seen it within the biodiversity unit, so it shouldn't be too different once you get to that lesson later on. So we'll talk about the roots first. For each of the organ, we're gonna, organs, we're going to talk about um, the tissues that you'll find within the organ and then the function um, that that organ plays. So the roots, um, they have uh, a few different types of tissues. They'll have dermal tissue. The dermal tissue will form the outer layer of the root. It's the protective layer, um, and it's also called the root cap. Um, there's also ground tissue, um, and then there's also vascular tissue as well. Um, and you'll also see some meristematic cells, um, which will allow for growth of the plant because when the plant grows, it'll often grow from the root pushing downwards um, by making new cells. So the main function of the root is to collect and transport water and nutrients. Um, so on the root, you'll see these little hairs, or they're called root hairs. Water and nutrients can be absorbed through the um, root hairs, and then eventually there'll be some vascular tissue that'll transport that to other parts of the plant where it's needed, for example, to the leaf. The roots are also important to anchor the plants. If you don't have roots and the plants aren't anchored to the ground, they'll blow away very easily and there goes your plant. And um, roots can often serve as storage um, roots. They can store food such as sugar made from the leaves within them. Um, so as you can see, roots are very, very important. Um, they're made up of many tissues. Um, the root cap you can see over here has meristematic cells, which, uh, which divide to allow the plant to grow. Um, and we'll talk in a bit more detail about the roots in just a bit. So there's two main types of root systems that you might see. There's something called a tap root system, which you can see in this picture over here. A tap root system is where you have this thick main root that's, um, that's growing below the ground. And then there's, um, there's some little um, 
lateral roots that kind of stick out of it as well. Um, but the main feature is a thick main root with small lateral roots that grow out of it. Um, and usually these grow quite deep into the soil. Um, and so you'll usually see these in uh, gymnosperm and also angiosperm that are dicots. Eudicots, dicots, same thing. So angiosperm and dicots, um, uh, sorry, angiosperm, dicots, and um, gymnosperm, that's where you're going to see these taproot systems. Um, you also have fibrous root systems. You'll notice there's no big main root. It's just a bunch of um, small roots that each have their own lateral roots kind of growing off of them. Um, this um, is a little bit more shallow, so closer to the ground than uh, tap roots. And you're usually going to see this in angiosperm monocots. So the main idea I also want you to get is that all roots, regardless of the system that we're looking at, um, have root hairs, which are basically little extensions of the roots that allow for greater absorption. Think of it almost like uh, villi and intestines. So try to make some parallels and connection between the connections between the two um, organisms, animals and plants. Uh, so if we zoom in a little bit, we can take a look at the structure of the root in a bit more detail. Um, so on the outside over here, we can see the outer covering. Um, we can see the uh, root hair. So this is the epidermis, epi meaning outer. And then we can see the little root hairs to, that allows for greater absorption. Um, over here you can see the cortex. So the cortex is a layer of specialized cells and it does a few things. It can store starch um, and it can also help to transport water from this epidermis to, um, to, the, uh, to the xylem, which uh, we can find this vascular cylinder over here. Um, then we have the endodermis. So the endodermis over here, this little green part here. Um, this will help to move water and other substances from the cortex um, to the vascular tissues uh, found in the middle over here. Um, so there is one more thing I want you to look up. This strip over here, I want you to find that in your book to find out what it does. The Gafarian uh, strip, look it up um, and know its function. Uh, so again, we have our vascular tissue um, cylinder, which contains our vascular tissue. Um, within the root. So this is specifically the structure in a root, root hair found in the epidermis, the cortex in between the epidermis and the um, endodermis, and then we have our vascular cylinder over here. Uh, this is part of the dermal tissue over here. Um, the cortex is um, some ground tissue there. Um, the endodermis is also part of the ground tissue. And then our vascular cylinder over here is part of our um, vascular tissue. So you can see the different tissues found within this organ. Again, over here, root hairs, endodermis, cortex, xylem phloem. So know what tissues these are all made up of. Um, so how can you tell uh, if you're dealing with dicots or monocots um, uh, when you have a plant and you're just looking at its roots? So if you have a cross section of a root um, you can notice some patterns that'll give away what type of plant you're looking at. For um, monocots, you're going to be seeing something like this. You'll have a um, ring of xylem and phloem. So you're going to have a vascular cylinder and it forms a ring over here. For dicots and gymnosperm, um, your xylem is going to form an X in the middle. Okay, So your xylem forms an X in the middle and then it's surrounded by phloem. It's surrounded by phloem. So here you can take a look. The xylem and phloem in the monocots um, form a ring, uh, whereas in the uh, dicots and gymnosperm, the xylem forms an X. Think xylem starts with X, right? And then that's surrounded by uh, phloem throughout. So just by looking at the cross-section of the root, you can tell what type of plant you're looking at. Uh, so you should be able to look at this and tell me what type of plant it is. Hopefully you told me it was a gymnosperm or an angiosperm dicot. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on this, but I just want you to get that the root cap um, is um, the extremity, extremity of the um, root over here. Um, it has meristematic cells, which basically divide and then push the plant upwards so it can elongate and grow. That's all I really need you to know about the root cap. So roots are very important. 
Um, they do many things in the plant, but they're also very important for us. Um, they can be a very, very useful source of food. So if you've ever had sweet potatoes, um, they are roots and they're actually storage roots. Um, so they store a lot of sugar and nutrients, uh, a lot of sugar and carbs made from the plant leaves um, within them. So we have some storage roots over here. Uh, carrots are also roots and they're a great food source. They're a type of storage root as well. So I do want you to make a few extra notes on root specialization, human use of roots, and erosion um, control. Um, just really point form a couple ideas from each. Um, know what humans use them for, you already know that. Erosion control, it'd be a good idea to know at least what that is, and then a few ideas of root specialization. So now we get to the leaves. So again, we'll take a look at the tissues, and then we'll take a look at the function of the leaf. Uh, so for the tissue, there's some vascular tissue in the leaves, and the vascular tissue is what's going to carry the water from the root to the leaf. Um, and then it'll also carry sugars made in the leaf to other parts of the plant. Um, this is probably one of the most important diagrams um, in this presentation because you will see it um, on your culminating. Um, and if you don't see it on your culminating, you'll see it somewhere for sure. Um, so dermal tissue, um, we'll talk about that as well. Um, I'm going to point them out on these plants here, but dermal tissue within the um, leaf will help to make the uh, waxy cuticle, um, and it also helps to form the uh, stomata for gas exchange. And then our ground tissue um, is the mesophyll area, and that's where photosynthesis happens. So let's go take a look over here. Here we have some cells of the epidermal tissue, just um, the top layer over here, and that makes our waxy cuticle over here for some uh, protection and to prevent dehydration. Um, at the bottom part, um, you'll see the stomata, and um, that's also part of our epidermal tissue area. And then over here you can see our vascular tissue, um, which contains xylem and phloem. So the xylem will have carried water up from the roots to the leaf, and the phloem will take the sugars away and bring them to other parts of the plant. And then finally in this area here, kind of sandwiched in between, you have the mesophyll area, which is our ground tissue, and it contains a whole bunch of these cells here with um, chloroplast in them to do photosynthesis. So this leaf is really set up to do photosynthesis. It's set up to get its ingredients. It's set up uh, with cells that have chloroplast in them. It's set up with little pores to allow for gas exchange. So it's really set up um, in quite, quite a good way to do photosynthesis. So the main function of leaves um, is for gas exchange, trading oxygen and carbon dioxide. Absorption of sunlight um, using the chlorophyll within the, the um, uh, chloroplast. Um, the chlorophyll, they're, they're pigments, so we call them photopigments because they're pigments that absorb light. Um, and their main function, of course, that we've been talking about all this time is to do photosynthesis. Uh, they also allow for some transport, so um, th their main role is not really transport, but I should say they produce sugar, which is transported to other parts of the plant. Um, so leaves can also have defenses, defense purposes. Um, so when you look at um, leaves of the cactus over here, um, they have sharp spines on them. Um, and also some leaves, as we saw in the previous, presenta in the previous presentation, were these chemicals that um, basically call for backup so that you can get rid of herbivores that are biting you. Um, some of these can be poisonous. Um, and can hurt you when you're trying to eat them or pick them off. Um, so they do have a defensive purpose, pr defense purpose as well. Um, and typically that's found on the epidermal region of it. So now we'll take a look at the outer structure of a leaf. Um, so the flat part of the leaf is called the uh, blade. And the blade is the flat part and it's flat because it allows for increased surface area to absorb light for uh, photosynthesis. The petiole is the part that attaches the blade of the leaf to the stem. Um, leaves can be either simple or compound. Uh, so if you have um, a simple leaf, it's just one blade, like this one over here. And if you have a compound leaf, it's um, several little, we call them uh, leaflets, attached to the uh, petiole, um, as opposed to one main blade. Uh, you'll also notice on the leaf, you have these parts called veins. Um, and so the veins are the areas that contain the vascular tissue. So you're really not going to see too much photosynthesis happening there. You're going to see mostly 
um, you're going to see the vascular tissue there. Um, and so you can actually see uh, some different patterns um, depending on whether you have a monocot or a dicot. So if you have a um, monocot, you're going to see nice parallel um, veins. If you have a dicot, you're going to see networks of, of veins. So you can actually tell if you have a monocot or a dicot by taking a look at the leaf as well and seeing the pattern of the leaf, um, the way it branches out. Let's go back and take a look at the internal structure of the leaf in some more detail. Um, like I said, this is a very important image. It's similar to the other one we saw earlier, this little leaf sandwich here. Um, and this is the internal structure of the, um, the leaf. Um, and it's a beautiful structure because it shows you all the specialized cells and the tissues within. Um, so we'll start off with the epidermal cells. Um, there's really two, two main parts of epidermal cells. You have the um, upper epidermis and the lower epidermis. The upper ep epidermis will uh, produce the waxy cuticle to prevent dehydration. The lower epidermis will contain um, the stoma or the stomata pearl, um, which have guard cells to open and close and regulate that gas exchange. Um, now, one important thing about the waxy cuticle is that it's transparent, which is good because that allows light to go through um, and therefore um, be used in photosynthesis. Um, and one thing to point out again is that these stomata are found at the bottom portion of the leaf and they're controlled by guard cells. Let's take a look at the mesophyll um, region. The mesophyll region is um, mostly ground tissue that specializes in photosynthesis. So we can see the mesophyll region over here. There's two parts of the mesophyll region. We have the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll. So the palisade, uh, palisade, I should say, mesophyll, um, is directly underneath the upper epidermis. Um, and it has these elongated cells that are closely packed together. And they're closely packed together so they could absorb as much light as possible. Um, so nice elongated cells that are closely packed together to absorb as much light as possible. And as you can see, they also have chloroplasts to allow them to do photosynthesis. You then have the spongy mesophyll. Um, they're not as closely packed together. The cells are not as closely packed together. They're actually loosely packed. And there's lo they're loosely packed because there's air spaces there and that allows for more of that gas exchange to happen. Um, so there's air spaces for gas to enter and leave, leave the leaf um, in order to do what it has to do. And then we get into our vascular bundle. So this is our bundle of vascular tissue. We have some xylem, we have some phloem, um, so again, the xylem brought the water to the leaf for photosynthesis to happen. The phloem takes the sugar made by photosynthesis and brings it to other parts. So we saw many tissues working together within this leaf structure. You should know this leaf structure very well, how to draw it and how to label it. Um, you should even look up maybe some micrographs of this leaf structure, some images from microscopes of this leaf structure um, and practice labeling it. That would be a really good idea. Again, this is a similar picture, um, just a different layout, but same idea. So you should become so familiar and comfortable with this picture that you can label different versions of it and know what the parts are. Leaves are very important, not just to do photosynthesis, but because they are a great source of food as well. Um, so leaves can be used um, in many dishes and we eat leaves, for example, lettuce, um, spinach leaves, so on and so forth. Um, so you should look up some human use of leaves, um, just a few, you already know a few of them already. Um, take a look at leaves and chemicals in the textbook, just a few um, points, some psychotropic drugs, um, and then leaf specializations. So just brief jot notes about these topics here, um, so at least you have an idea of something to talk about if you're asked this in a communication question. And now we get to the stem. So the stem is this long part over here, above ground part, um, and there's many tissues within it. So you have epidermal tissue. The epidermal tissue in, this, in the stem is used for protection and exchange of gases. Uh, the ground tissue in the stem is used primarily for strength and support. Um, and the vascular tissue uh, is used for transport of substances. 
So the main function of the stem is to transport water and nutrients to support the leaves and the flower. And also there's a defense mechanism as well, right? You might have some little spikes or thorns or other um, uh, things that prevent the uh, herbivores from really um, destroying the plant completely. So there's two main types of uh, stems. Um, you can have herbaceous stems, which are stems that do not contain um, wood. And these stems are usually green. And because they're green, uh, that means they can do photosynthesis. They have a very thin epidermis. You can also have woody stems. Um, and woody stems are, just as the word says, stems that contain wood. They're harder, they have a bark, and they don't carry photosynthesis. To do photosynthesis, for plants anyways, usually have to be green. Um, so uh, gymnosperm, all gymnosperm are gonna be um, woody. Um, most, if you have a, an angiosperm that's woody, it's usually gonna be a dicot. Um, monocots, they don't produce um, wood. So this over here, this uh, asparagus is a monocot. So let's take a look at the anatomy of herbaceous stems first. Um, so if you were to cut a stem open and take a look at what's on the inside, um, you would notice a lot of vascular tissue found in these areas called vascular bundles, which are basically groups of vascular tissue, usually xylem and phloem. Um, and so again, within the bundle, you'll have xylem and you'll also have phloem. The xylem is gonna be closer to the center of the bundle and the phloem is usually closer to the outside of the, of the bundle um, of the stem. Okay, so um, you can take a look at the vascular bundles here. Usually if it's closer to the outside, it's part of the phloem. If it's closer to the inside, it's part of the uh, xylem. Uh, so if you're looking at stems, the vascular um, bundle in, in monocots um, will be kind of spread throughout the ground tissue. If you're looking at dicots, the vascular bundle is found in, um, are found in rings. And now we can take a look at the woody stem. So the woody stem is a bit more complex. There's a few more parts to it, but they still have xylem and phloem, um, just like the others. Um, so they usually grow thicker because um, the woody stems grow thicker every year, actually, over the years, because of this thing called the vascular um, cambium. Um, and so the vascular cambium is a, a layer of meristematic cells that'll actually form new xylem and new phloem every year. The new xylem is uh, formed on the inside and the phloem is formed on the outside. And so what is wood? Well, wood is the many layers of xylem tissue that's formed year after year. So we can see that over here. Um, there's two main types of wood. You have sapwood and hardwood. So you can see sapwood over here and hardwood, um, the uh, heartwood, the sapwood is usually is a younger wood, um, and that's the one that's being used to transport uh, water and minerals to the leaves. The heartwood is the older wood, and it's now just mostly used for strength and support, no longer transporting. Um, so you have your vascular, vascular cambrium producing new xylem um, every year. So the younger one would be over here, and the older one would be get, getting towards the center over here. Um, and then, so the idea is that the growth rings that you see on a tree, they're the new layers of xylem that you see every year. So you can see that over here. Here's our vascular cambium. Here's our xylem that forms. And then on the other side, you have some of that phloem that forms. Um, you also have bark. So bark is basically all tissues found on the outside of the uh, cambium. Um, and that includes phloem, cork cambium, and cork. Um, bark is super important because it, shows a, it serves a protective nature. Um, you can protect the plants from herbivores and even some, um, some uh, fires that are low, low enough in temperature. Um, so the cork cambium, um, this is just basically a layer of meristematic tissues that'll produce, well, the cork. And the cork, well, that's the outer layer that um, produces the, uh, that, that, that prevents water loss uh, from the main stem. So a lot more complex, a lot more parts to it, um, but there's still xylem and phloem in it. That's the big idea. And now you know what growth rings are. They come from the xylem. So uh, we'll briefly talk about our cell types within 
the uh, vascular tissue. We have our xylem cells and our phloem cells. You should really know the difference between them. So xylem cells are thick walled and they're dead when they're mature. So there's actually no organelles within them. Their cell walls are made up of lignin, which is a carbohydrate that makes them very strong. Um, not just lignin, but they have lignin in them that makes them very strong. I um, mean, there's two main types of, um, of uh, xylem cells. You have uh, tracheid um, cells and then the uh, vessel elements as well. Um, and so if you look at the plant groups, gymnosperm only contain tracheids, um, whereas angiosperm contain tracheids and vessel elements. Um, for phloem, they're living at maturity. That means they have cytoplasm, they have organelles. You should go and look at their structure in that table I mentioned earlier. There's three main types. There's sieve tube elements, there's sieve cells, and there's companion cells. And those are all just different types of um, phloem cells that exist. Um, and the main idea is that not all plants contain all of these different cell types. For example, if you look at the gymnosperm, they're just going to contain the sieve cells. But if you look at the angiosperm, they'll contain sieve tube elements and companion cells. In terms of, do you have to know how to label all of these things here? No, but you should know, you know that it is a type of phloem cell that you're looking at. So this is just a, a, a zoom in of our uh, stem um, that contains vascular bundles, um, which is basically just bundles of xylem and phloem cells that transport substances throughout the, uh, the plant. So you should um, read up on the different types of vascular tissue cells. Um, you should look at some cell stem specializations. Um, and you should also look at human use of stems. So anything that we study, you should know what humans use them for. Um, just like we saw with uh, leaves and roots, stems can also be a great food source as well. And lastly, we get to our organ system. So we just studied, we studied plant cells in general. We studied specialized plant cells. Um, we studied tissues. We studied organs. And now we're going to take a look at what happens when you get many organs that come together to make their organ systems. Unlike animal systems, plant systems are a bit easier to remember because there's only really two main plant systems. You have your shoot system and your root system. Root system is the below ground part of the plant, which contain your, contains your roots. The uh, shoot system is the above ground part of the plant, which contains your leaves, photosynthesis, your stem for support, and your flower for reproduction purposes. So two main organ systems, shoot system, root system, that's straightforward. You should read up a little bit on um, page 44 to learn about the phylogeny of plants, how it was updated. Um, so you can take a look over here at the, um, the different groups of plants that we um, studied earlier um, and how we now organize them based on their tissues, based on whether they contain seeds or not, and based on whether they have flowers um, uh, and fruits, so on and so forth. So um, this is a great way to take a look at the um, plants and these are, um, this is specifically a diagram showing you the different types of um, angiosperm. So you have a great plant video to watch over here. Um, do the readings in your textbook along with the learning goals. There's also some labeling worksheets that you can do. Please make sure that you do those. They're very important and they will help you with the uh, exam and the culminating.